Hi, David Vizard here. The subject of this Paratac 10 is when flat tappets rain over rollers. I think you'll find the subject of this episode somewhat different from usual. What we're going to look at is how we can get better power from short duration cams from a flat tappet cam than we can from a roller. Sound a little incredible? No, it's actually not. Let's start the ball rolling here by um, possibly destroying a myth, right? And that myth is that a roller cam can out-accelerate a flat tappet cam. Not true. You might look at the lobes on a roller cam and say they look so much more aggressive than those on a flat tappet cam. But the roller tames them down considerably. We have a situation where the flat tappet cam can actually have infinite acceleration. If the contact patch moves from the center of the follower to the edge of the cam instantly, and it can if the profile is flat enough in that area, then the acceleration will go from zero to maximum velocity in no time flat, infinite acceleration. If we try to apply that same acceleration to a roller, it will simply smash the roller off because what we have is an opening which requires that the lobe meets the roller flat like this directly through the axis of the roller. Well, it's not going to lift the valve, it's just going to cut the roller off, period. What happens with the roller is there's a pressure angle right, um, where there's the roller and the, the, the cam, and as the cam comes around, the pressure angle can only be a, a certain amount before the stresses get too much, right? typically about 28 degrees for a, um, a hot street cam, maybe about 30, 32 degrees for a pro stock uh, profile. However, here's our situation. The roller cam, depending on its duration, can keep on accelerating the valve longer. So the velocity gets higher. Now the flat tappet cam can only have as much velocity as the diameter of the lifter and the contact patch allows it to. That's where our flat tappet cam is limited. If we could have a big enough lifter and a big enough base circle, a flat tappet cam can lift the valves at an incredible rate. For our street machines, we have a problem, right? That problem is that with the flat tappet cam, the velocity it can attain is way below that of a hydraulic or a roller cam. However, if the duration is short, the roller cam never makes up the deficiency. So we find that the shorter the cam becomes, the f more advantage there is to the flat tappet. For something like a small block Chevy, the crossover point is around 275 degree, uh, degree duration. That means that, and I'm talking hydraulics here, that means that a 275 degree flat tappet cam actually has slightly more opening area than a 275 degree roller cam. We can utilize that to our benefit 
and here's how we will do it. Here's the thing, we could, with the money we save on a roller cam, fund a crankshaft, a stroker crank. Now, you have to ask a, quest a question here. Would a stroker crank plus a flat tappet cam make more horsepower than a stock stroke crank and a roller cam? Now, bearing in mind, they're going to cost about the same power. Let's look at how that just might be possible here. Let me demonstrate where we're going with this with my Torque Master program. This is a program here that uh, Stan Weiss and I put together. It's been a long time happening, uh, still in the process. It's got small block Chevy and small block Ford pretty sorted out. But here's my point. It computes the horsepower very accurately. Uh, pretty close to as accurate as a dyno does. Doesn't give us a curve, but it gives us total peak torque and peak horsepower. Now what I've done here is I've put in a 30 over stock stroke uh, small block Chevy with a flat tappet cam, right? So that gives us 355 cubic inches. The cam it's predicting is on 107 lobe center line angle. 268, 268. I've deliberately selected a single pattern cam here because for the street, that's probably the best route to go. If you're looking to launch the vehicle, the best it can be launched with a stock tight converter. Four degrees advance, intake center line there, recommended minimum lift, 432. Intake for 14 exhaust, vacuum at idle 17.2, dynamic compression 8 to 1. We will target 8 to 1 for every one of our street cams, right? And this gives us a potential torque of 435 foot pounds and an estimated power potential of 396, right? So nice street motor. Uh, the minimum head flow it requires is 210. Target port CC is 152, right? So peak horsepower RPM from above length. Uh, well, and this is for the tuned length here, so we won't go into that. But anyway, this is a true pump gas build here, right? So let's see what that will do if we convert to a roller setup. There's a lot more money here. Well, here's our page for the uh, hydraulic roller. Now, because the cam lifts more slowly off the seat, right, it tends to generate higher dynamic pressures here, right? So, to get the same dynamic pressure, uh, dynamic compression ratio, uh, we put the peak power RPM up to 5,250, which, which is realistic for the, t the two, uh, a comparison between the two cams. Now, what do we have now? Let's look through. We've got 448 uh, foot-pounds of torque and 412 horsepower. So, a little bit more, but that's due to the fact that the roller will go further up the RPM range there, that extra 100 RPM. Right, so now let's update Excel, go down here. Well, here we are on our um, data page with all the uh, cams. I want you to notice this program has 385 small block Chevy hydraulic roller cams in the data bank, right? So, and by the way, that's far more than comp cams has. Let's go and sort them out, right? We want a single pattern, we've got all that. I've already done this, uh, gone through the same rigmarole. And here we've got 268 degrees of seat duration. Notice we've got 218 degrees at 50 here. Now I'm gonna list all these in a spreadsheet so you can make a direct comparison, right? 
to 143 degrees at um, 200 lift. Now let's move along here. Right now we've got 27.09 lobe area and the aggression index is 101.1. We've got 356 lift. So we have less duration at 50, but more lift. That's because the roller can keep on accelerating. Here is our Excel data chart. Roller cam is the yellow row. Flat tap it is the blue one. Here's the comp cam's profile numbers. Duration for both of them at six thousandths is 268 degrees. The roller only has 218 degrees at 50, whereas the flat has 224. So it gets to 50 faster because it accelerates faster. However, it reaches the limit of its velocity, which limits the, 2000, the 200 duration to 138, whereas the roller makes 143. Now, I stated earlier that the flat top it had slightly more um, uh, air, lobe area than the roller. Actually, it's the, it's the other way around. There's slightly more lobe area in the roller, but they're close. 27.1 for the roller, 26.8 for the flat tappet. The aggression index, that's, that's how aggressive the lobe is, right? That's something I have kind of come up with myself here for my uh, CAM program. But it's 101.1 for the roller, 98.3 for the uh, flat tappet. The lift, 356 for the roller, 325 for the flat tappet. And that would account for these two numbers being slightly, sl uh, slightly lower. <coughs> Moving on to the horsepower, 448 horsepower for the roller cam, 435 for the flat tappet. 412 foot-pounds for the roller, 396 for the flat tappet. Peak power, 5250 for the roller, 5150 for the flat tappet. Cost, and I cost, I priced these out of Summit's catalog. 805 for the cost of the roller and the tappets or lifters. 245 for the cam and the lifters. A saving of $560. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to look at what we can do in terms of spending that money on a crank. But before I do that, let me point out that PRW's uh, 165 roller, the one with the ball, uh, conventional ball that the uh, rocker pivots on, but with a roller tip and they're stainless, they are extremely stiff, right? They may not cost much money, but they are extremely stiff and stout, right? Use a good oil, or even put oil extreme into the oil and the uh, fact they're on a, a ball pivot will make no difference. They will run like they are rollers. So add 135 to that. That's 245, 275, 280, $380, right? So for $380 with a 165 roller uh, uh, rocker, you can make up for the lower lift here. And what that does is this combination here for $380 will make more horsepower than the roller. Now, of course, you could spend money on the rollers there, 
uh, roller rockers there, but that's going to make that number at least 135 higher. Let's go and see what we can do in the way of a crank for that $560 difference. Well, here we can make a comparison between our 383 and our 355 with a roller cam. Again, I priced the crankshaft out of uh, and the rods out of Summit's cam. And it's going to be $19 more expensive, so it's an extra $19 out of your pocket. But here's what you get. Let's run through this here. First, the comp cam's profile. It's 274 instead of 268. That's to make up for the displacement, get the uh, uh, dynamic compression right and the uh, uh, vacuum right so that had 230 degrees at 50 143 at 200 so it matched the roller 27.5 lobe area so it beat both of these numbers 100.4 so it almost met that 336 okay it's 20 thousandths less than that now look at this here 450 horsepower right now that might only be two more than that but try this for size 494 foot pounds of torque that is 98 more than that and about 80 more than that there let me see 412 from 494 be 82 peak power 5150 cost $824. Now, the crank I looked up was an internally balanced one, so you do not have to buy new dampers and new anything else. Of course, you have to buy pistons. However, this is a 30 over bore because I assumed the engine needed a rebore, so we had to buy pistons to build this engine. Instead, we're going to buy pistons to suit the longer rods and the stroke for the, for the 383. I can thoroughly recommend the Mali pistons uh, with the 1.2 millimeter ring and there are some with a one millimeter ring that I've tried that work very well, very low friction, right? Another brand I can recommend is uh, the um, Icon pistons. Uh, that, that's the company that makes the uh, KB pistons, right? However, you could use a hyper-eutectic piston from, well, Summit has these, and that would be the sealed pair one. That, that works very well. Now, let's have a look at one more thing here, right? That is the possibility of wearing out a cam lobe or a lifter if you go with the flat tappet. Before wrapping up this episode of Paratech 10, I have a few provisos. First, I use a lot of flat tappet cams. Here's three that I'm going to be installing into 350 small block Chevys, right? Each engine is going to be a dyno mule and it's going to test one thing or another. Now I can't afford to have a cam and lifter problem. So there's precautions that you need to take. First. I never use a cam that's not been case hardened, right? Comp charges an extra about $110 for this. Now this might seem like a, uh, an extra cost on top and it's not countered in, but the thing is I always use hardened ones because they make more power. There is less friction between the interface of the follower and the cam lobe. However, if you want to get a cam that has a lifetime warranty on it, then you might want to check out with a Howard's cam because they have um, uh, got cores which have, uh, and I think they've got a lot more chrome and nickel in the core. And w without any hardening tr treatment, they will survive. 
Now let's still hang on this um, lifter problem, right? If your lifter does not rotate freely in the bore of the lifter bore, then you need to fix it, right? If it does not rotate freely, it will fail. Um, also, you need to check that the oil is coming through the lifters and that's an easy thing to do. You just spin the pump over with an electric drill gun, right, and check to see that the oil's coming out okay. Lastly, you could put Oil Extreme in. It's a lot better than ZDDP. Now, I have to make a disclaimer here. I do own shares in, in Oil Extreme, and I bought them for one reason and one reason alone. The stuff really works. Right? Um, now I've got a reputation for saying it the way it really is. If it didn't work, I'd say so. What else can we do here? Um, oh, yes, I demoed the Oil Extreme in front of a class. Without putting my hands on the engine or the product, I had somebody, a well-known circle track engine builder, dyno test it, and it did exactly as I said. You realize what the consequences were if it had failed to work. Nobody would take my word for anything. Can't afford that. Right, so if you want to make sure that your lifters have the best chance of surviving oil extreme and you'll pick up about six horsepower to boot. Now, is there anything else I can say here? Yes. Um, I'm going to do a, a, a video on cam timing because there is some very important information you need to know about cam timing and it's going to show that half the advice you get is total BS. I'll get to that down the road. Thank you for watching.